Welcome to the second half of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC course ranking. Now we did do the first half of the first three waves, so if you didn't watch that you might want to check that out first so you're not confused. Okay, so starting where we left off, the second half of the Booster Course Pass started with Wave 4, giving us the Fruit Cup. As usual, this started with the City Track, this time being Amsterdam Drift, and boy was I unimpressed. City courses are pretty bland to begin with, but apparently there was just nothing in Amsterdam for them to pull from except making it a ripoff of Daisy Hills on the 3DS. Now, it does seem to have a pretty lengthy water section, but the problem with that is it's not even that fun, and it's not like I can swim through the canals if I go there in real life, so it might as well not be a real city course at all. Not to mention the field of low-res flowers that are way too close to the camera to even try to look good, and this was honestly kind of just the worst way to start off the second half, especially with how well they ended the last wave. So sadly, Denmark can barely scrape by with a C ranking at best. Next is Riverside Park, which fares so much better. I guess I'm just a sucker for the Super Circuit remakes, because I've really enjoyed all of the GBA tracks in the Booster Course Pass, including this jungle waterfall track with Patooies walking around everywhere, and if you hit them or trick someone else into them, you can free their items. And once again, it may be a little short, but the added verticality of flying out of a waterfall makes it come alive in a way that the Game Boy Advance never could thus making it a phenomenal remake, almost an entirely new track, earning an A rank on the list. Then we come to DK Summit, and this was a track that I loved on the Wii, and I was really looking forward to it here, and it is still fun, but it didn't quite live up to what I expected or remembered. It may just be me, but the whole aesthetic is a little bit off, since the original was kind of foggy and like it could start snowing again at any minute, but here it's a bright and sunny day, almost a little too bright. Not to mention the rock textures are far worse here and in your face about it, still using the tour assets, and they also changed the snow layout so my muscle memory is off now too. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that they actually have a Donkey Kong statue now instead of Mario, but it just feels off even if it still is fun to do all the tricking and everything, but I would settle this in a nice B tier for now. And we finish this cup with Yoshi's Island. I know that plenty of people love this track as one of their all-time favorites, but I'm here to say it's pretty good. I've never played a single Yoshi game unless you count Smash, so I only get maybe a sixth of the references here, but I can't help but feel that in trying to cram in everything, they made the track feel too short. If they had three distinct different laps all in one race, like 3DS Rainbow Road, with one being the underwater foresty area, and then the next one being the volcano, and then maybe the clouds, it would actually represent their ideas a lot better. Although, then you would only get one shot at hitting that cloud thing, which I can never seem to do anyway, it's so frustrating. But that's why it's not an S ranking for me. I will, however, put it at an A because it is still quite fun to do. Oh, and I should probably mention the new characters as well, because the second half opened by showing off Birdo. Nobody expected this, and Birdo specifically came in many colors, but Birdo was really more exciting for what it could mean in the future rather than inherently exhilarating, although it does kind of go with Yoshi's Island, so I guess that's why they put her here. Next we have the Boomerang Cup that starts with Bangkok Rush. This one is better than Amsterdam, I'll give you that, and there's a lot here that is fun. It's kind of odd to drive on top of the water, but the boat hopping is cool, along with the branching vertical pads and bouncing across tents, but somehow these pieces don't seem to add up to a satisfying whole. It's not the worst city track by any means, but there are still too many spots lacking real identity to make me feel like I'm really in Bangkok. So I will have fun when playing this course, but it's not a sustained fun, so I gotta give it a B rank. Then comes Mario Circuit from the DS, and I have to say, it is shocking how many people thought that this was Figure 8 Circuit, but it's not the first track from that game. I guess that means that it's even more forgettable, which doesn't bode well for it, but I actually like this course. This Mario Circuit may be simple, but the fire piranha plants are a nice threat, and the sudden trip to the woods is surprisingly refreshing, especially when the Wiggler awakens. Also, it's got some pretty satisfying drift turns, so it may not be the most original theming, but it is still deserving of a solid B rank for sure. Next is Waluigi Stadium, and honestly, even though I loved the Double Dash and Wii versions, I wasn't really excited for this one to come back, but boy was I wrong. Firstly, this looks great. 
Somehow the wet look of the mud works, and the giant mechanized piranha plants are so fitting, making this somehow one of the best looking tracks in the whole DLC, basically as good as the base game. But it's not just for show, because the half pipes from the Wii now lead up to anti-gravity paths that you can gain a lot of speed on but are harder to control. So this is a brilliant addition of that feature as a risk-reward system, making the already good track pretty great, so I have to give it an A-tier ranking. And we close this cup with Singapore Speedway. This is easily the best city track of the first four waves, maybe the whole DLC. First of all, the nighttime setting adds so much with the vibrant lights, then you immediately shoot out onto the rooftop pool with the Goombas just to fly straight back down and it keeps right on going. There are conveyor belts through light up trees, a fun section where you can choose to glide or drop down to the road, and plenty of crisscrossing the lower racers. This is actually a pretty long course as well, but I'm still left wanting more by the time it's done. Why couldn't this have opened up Wave 4? Come on, guys. Singapore was truly the first time I fully appreciated a city track, and I'm willing to say that it's worthy of being the first at an S ranking. Now, Wave 5 starts with the Feather Cup and the Athens Dash course. I know that I said Singapore was the first great city track, but Athens was a pretty decent follow-up for sure. I'm glad that they leaned into the strength of Athens, that being the ancient ruins, and it's quite fun to race around the pillars of the Parthenon. And there's a surprising amount of height involved in this course, falling down quite far just to climb back up again. And then just some fun dodging boulders and gliding through town. If we have to go to multiple cities per wave, I'm glad they're finally picking ones that are distinct enough to stand out, and I think, just like its name, Athens earns an A. Next is Daisy Cruiser, and I'm a bit torn on this one. It's not bad by any means, but it's also largely unchanged from when it was on Mario Kart 7, which the Booster Course Pass made me play a lot more, so I was already refreshed with the cool underwater section, including the now accessible pool. I will say that the dining room glow up is quite impressive with the tables now actually being populated, but as fun as these updates are, the layout of the course is just a little too simple for my taste. So it's definitely good, but a little plain, so a solid B ranking seems in order here. And now we have Moonview Highway, and I am fully prepared to get the heat, but I do not care for this track at all. We have at least two and sometimes three city tracks per wave, and you decided to bring back another one? If you had to pick a Wii course, at least do one that's more unique like Toad's Factory, or even a more distinct city like Daisy Circuit. What's that? Oh, we'll get to that one, I guess. But Moonview Highway has nothing else besides bomb cars, maybe, that any other city has. Even its namesake doesn't make it stand out because we have other night tracks and a better one in this very wave. I just never found this track to be that fun, and it's showing up here to take a spot from a more deserving track leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I will say that it's not totally unplayable because of the outside of the city sections, but I have to stick to my guns here and give it no higher than a D. And this cup ends with Squeaky Clean Sprint. This is another that I see praised as one of the best, and I do agree that the whole premise of speeding through a bathroom as you're small enough to fit down the drain is a superb idea, and the layout is fun, but that's the problem. I want to try out all of the tricks and branching paths, but you can't. After the drain pipe, we fly over the toilet, and it's not until the second lap that you can access the upper level, which ordinarily would be fine, but for some reason, they hid a majority of the forking routes behind the finish line, meaning at most that you can try one of them after lap two, but before you can even plan your next one, the race is done. I even had to record myself playing it twice just to get this extra footage. At the very least, they could have started the overflow on lap one. I do thoroughly enjoy Squeaky Clean sprint, but I'm sorry to say that the clear lack of forethought means that I can't put it any higher than an A. Now we have the Cherry Cup, which starts with Los Angeles laps, and we're back to the bad city tracks. I have no clue who thought this was a good idea, but there's a skate park and the Dodger Stadium, and those are like the only fun parts of this track. All city courses are bad about long, dull straightaways, but LA has a talent for letting nothing happen for the longest amounts of time and then they drag you through the oil fields where color goes to die. Why couldn't we have gone to the tar pits instead? This whole thing is just a mess, and I do not feel bad at all for giving it a lowly D ranking. Now, I must say, Sunset Wilds gets a bad rap. 
It's not great because it doesn't have the sun setting like literally every other version of this track in all of history, but I still find the aesthetic quite pleasing. I just love the prospecting Shy Guys happily dancing at their found gold. And the random dinosaur footprints add character to otherwise bland spots. Not to mention some hills that were put in that couldn't possibly be in the original. So I don't hate this track nearly as much as most everyone else, but I was going to put it even higher until I realized this new layout is significantly shorter than the GBA version. Seriously, look at them side by side. They basically chopped out a whole third of the course. So while some people drop it out of sheer hatred, I'm dropping it because I wanted more out of it. But even so, I'm sure that a B rank is much higher than many other people's lists. Then we got Koopa Cape, and this was easily one of my favorite courses on the Wii, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but I can safely say that it's somewhere in the middle of the Wii and the 3DS. As a retro track in 7, Koopa Cape seemed a little lacking, but much of that charm is brought back here. The colors are great, the ramps and the water feel nice, and while 7 removed the pipe from the underwater section, 8 now makes it anti-grav, which means that where you once tried to avoid the hazards, you are now incentivized to hit the boosters to gain speed. So that's a fun inversion of what we're used to, even if the halfpipe does make it a bit harder to land sometimes. So an extraordinary track brought back at full strength with some fun alterations means that Koopa Cape has to maintain its S ranking. And this cup ends off with Vancouver Velocity, and as a city track goes, this one is actually pretty solid. Sure, it has some bland streets of nothingness like any of them, but right from the start you know that it's different with these swirling bridges in a park. Not to mention the superior nighttime theming view of the moon that I was alluding to before, but this Canadian city rarely has a boring straightaway for too long like the others, providing variety in flights or branching paths or multiple trips through a hockey stadium, so I would say this is one of my most replayed city tracks and quite fittingly for Canada it will have an A ranking. If LA Laps didn't start out the Cherry Cup, it might have been my overall favorite. Also, we should probably point out that Wave 5 introduced Kamek, Wiggler, and Petey Piranha as characters, which were quite fun. I love using Petey Piranha all the time and having Wiggler actually ride a Wiggler is ridiculous. Then we reach the final Wave 6 with the Acorn Cup starting at Rome Avanti. And just how the last cup ended strong, this one starts off with a bang. Rome seemed a wonderful choice for this sort of thing, with the literal streets themselves looking different from the others with the stonework. And the nighttime setting was a brilliant touch. Going through the Colosseum is probably the whole reason to pick this in the first place, but the rest of the city is not devoid of its own charms. Flying past some fuzzies or over the signature fountain, I'm still maybe not all that great at this course, but I do still enjoy Rome Avanti when stacked against the other numerous real-world tracks, handily getting it an A ranking. Next is DK Mountain from Double Dash, and I gotta say, something about it feels a little bit off, doesn't it? I don't know, it just feels like it was better in previous versions. I mean, the volcano's cutout face is a neat touch, I guess, and the ramps just being the hills now is cool, but the drifting around the boulders isn't quite as gratifying, and the odd removal of item boxes in prime locations makes me feel helpless a lot more than I used to. I guess that incentivizes you to use the half pipes instead, but they're just such a detour that you're gonna get behind either way. So it may sound harsh, but for the last wave, I was expecting a little more out of this track, like maybe some anti-gravity, so I'm afraid that this class it can only get a B from me in this form. And then, almost out of nowhere, we got Daisy Circuit from the Wii, making the Wii a little overrepresented in the DLC, but I'm not complaining. Daisy Circuit was never my top favorite, but I did always enjoy a pleasant little town at sunset, certainly more than Moonview Highway, and they carried that over here while adding in some differences, like a glider ramp that I always used to take anyway, but it now has a roadblock, not to mention the tons of speed boosts around the lighthouse. It's also funny how you can see Daisy Cruiser in the distance and then go race on it right afterwards, so I don't know if it's worthy of being in the last wave of the DLC, but I am glad that it's here and I'll give it a B tier ranking. And the Acorn Cup ends with Piranha Plant Cove, which pleasantly surprised me. Not all of the tour original tracks have been able to captivate me, but the underwater ruins of a forgotten Piranha Plant Temple is wonderful atmosphere. 
Also, this is another three-lap race, providing the kind of variety that I wish was in something like Yoshi's Island. But going up to the surface of the water actually gives you options to vary how you dive back down, giving strategic water sections instead of simply getting you soaked just because they can. I like this cove quite a bit, and even excessively long, uneventful turns hide shortcuts that you can use with speed boosts. However, there is a notable lack of actual piranha plants around, so it's not a perfect course, but it wouldn't be out of place to be in the base game of 8, so I will give it a high A ranking for sure. And of course, the very last cup, the Spiny Cup, begins with Madrid Drive, and I am so underwhelmed. This is decidedly a step down from the other city track in this wave, because I'm sure Madrid had plenty of unique landmarks and attractions, but they didn't put any of them in here. The museum is legitimately the only time I felt intrigued by my surroundings. And I know it's probably just me, but the oversized football stadium seems the most removed from any of the sports integration we've seen so far. Even if the boots are canon for Mario, it doesn't make sense to be in the real-world life-size version of Madrid. But to have this be the last city of the whole DLC was a huge misstep. And if Roma had been here instead, it might have been a perfect final cup. So I'm feeling generous and I'll give it a B, but I could easily be convinced to lower it no problem. I think that Rosalina's Ice World was a surprise when disclosed, but it somehow fit in pretty well. Ice physics can be tricky, but when paired with a precarious drop necessitating perfectly executed drifts, it makes a fun challenge to try and pull off. Also, the melting ice forcing you into the water at least once keeps the track fresh as you go on. And the clear galaxy connections are rewarding to see, especially with the much upgraded graphics from Mario Kart 7. So I may not always pick this course, but I will be happy to play it at any time, and it does deserve an A ranking. Now, Bowser's Castle 3 is not something that I was prepared for. Just like the GBA, I haven't ever really played the original Mario Kart, so I had no frame of reference, but this was an amazing track. The jagged corner turns are hard enough, but the constant bending of the track with anti-grav makes flying past all the lava feel actually dangerous. But you also have multiple paths to hopefully avoid and outrun other players. And of course, one of the coolest decisions ever, utilizing the curving floor to turn the barrier walls into giant ramps, creating even more separate paths to avoid players, and then tricking off of thwomps right before the finish line. So for me, this one came out of nowhere, and it's crazy to think that this was only the the second Bowser's Castle in the whole of Mario Kart 8 and instantly became the best one. But I think it's unquestionable that this track deserves a high S ranking. And at last, the Spiny Cup wraps up with Rainbow Road from the Wii. There was a lot of hype surrounding the final pick, and most everyone was pleased with this fan-favorite course coming back for the first time. Some people said they couldn't have ended with anything else. I'm not sure about that, but it is great fun to revisit what is frequently referred to as one of the hardest Rainbow Roads in the whole series. The tile texture may be a bit weird, but the star boost panels, the wavy ribbons, the cosmic cannons, and the star bits all create a visual feast as you speed through outer space. But don't worry, if it's too hard for you, you'll still burn up in the atmosphere when you fall off. I don't think this is the only course that could have ended it all. I might have actually preferred 3DS Rainbow Road, so it's not the absolute pinnacle, but it's still an excellent choice to bring back as part of the Ultimate Collection, and it will get a nice shiny A ranking to round out the list. This last wave also shocked us by adding double the characters we expected, with Diddy Kong, Pauline, Peachette, and everyone's most requested character, Funky Kong. He's got some pretty sweet animations, but this excess of characters had to actually rearrange the selection screen just to fit. So all around, I would say the booster course pass was worth it, especially because I barely touched Mario Kart 8 before, and now I regularly return to it. So looking back over both halves of the list and pooling the scores for each cup, I would say that the worst one of the bunch is the Lucky Cat Cup from the first wave, then number 11 would be the Turnip Cup, number 10 is the Propeller Cup, number 9 would be the Fruit Cup, which is narrowly beat by number 8, the Feather Cup, on the strength of its character selection, number 7 would be the first one, the Golden Dash Cup, number 6 is the latest Acorn Cup, number 5 is the Cherry Cup, number 4 would be the Rock Cup from Wave 3, then the number 3 spot goes to the Boomerang Cup, each one being enjoyable in its own right, and then number 2 would be the Spiny Cup. And you might ask, well, what could beat that? Well, to me, the Moon Cup is easily the best across the booster course pass. The absolute worst you could say about it is that Merry Mountain could be considered a little mediocre. But the 
the rest are favorite courses that I love to return to time and again. And I will stand by that it is the most enjoyable cup out of the entire Booster Course Pass. So those are my thoughts on the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. Well worth the price to double the content in the game. And I do still wish that there were one more cup so that they could bring it up to an even 100 tracks, but the Booster Course Pass was still a great way to revitalize the longest serving Mario Kart game to date. What are your favorite tracks from the Booster Course Pass? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you when Mario Kart 9 comes out. <laughs>